Amen. How many of you are glad to be in the number one more time? One more time. We all could have been cut off, but he saw fit to bring us safe one more time. Oh, it is a blessing to see you all's face this morning. To know that God has blessed us with another day's journey. Good morning to Rock Hill Baptist Church. Happy New Year to all of those that I have not bid a Happy New Year to. And I pray that we all will have the same New Year's resolution. We just want to do better in Christ this year. Huh? Just have that resolution. We just want to do better in Christ this year. If I can do that, oh, I heard him say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Then all other things will be added unto you. I just want to do better in Jesus. You'll find me this morning coming from the same passage that we read to you earlier. St. Mark, the second chapter. St. Mark, chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. For truly without Jesus, none of us would be here on this day. For he has kept us for another year's journey. And we pray that he's going to do even greater and better things on this year. We honor our deacons. We would like to give honor and praises to our preachers, our ministerial staffs, and their absence. To this fine choir and these ushers these musicians, those that are providing technical support, and to everyone under the sound of my voice, we greet you in the marvelous and matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Truly there is a word from the Lord. How many of you came to hear a word? Amen. You should be excited when it comes down to preaching time. Mark, the second chapter, we will begin reading at verse number one. Those of you who can, will you rest upon your feet for the reading of God's anointed and blessed word. And it reads, Mark, the second chapter, we begin reading at verse number one. And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And there came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof, where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thus ended the reading. If I may use for a sermon subject this morning, I'd like for you to take this thought with you. You must press to be blessed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's your man, servant one, Brother Raymond Young, standing here, Lord, in the need of prayer. For, Lord, I am faced with the task now of feeding these, your people, manna from on high. Truly, Lord, Raymond cannot do this of himself. So come now and take Raymond out of Raymond. Hide him, Lord, behind your cross. Let it be all of you, Lord, and none of me. I empty myself now that you might fill me, Lord, that when I open my mouth, you will speak. Let their ears hear directly from heaven, although their eyes may be fixed upon me. And Lord, if you do the preaching, this your man's servant will be careful to give your name honor. 
I'll give your name the glory. I'll give your name the praise. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You must press to be blessed. Here we are embarking on a new year. And I pray that all of us have made some decisions and came to some realizations that there's no need in going into a new year with the same attitude, doing the same things, and expecting different results. I pray that we are a congregation of people that want to be more blessed in 2016. Pray that we are folks that want to go higher in Jesus Christ in the year 2016. I pray that we are not going to settle for meteorocracy in the year 2016. Oh, if I did it pretty good last year, I want to do it even better this year. But in order to be blessed, you must be willing to press. You ought to tell the person sitting next to you that there's a blessing in the pressing. We need to press. We all have a few fancy saying that we have heard down through the years. We've heard some sayings and we all have begun to say them and they sound great, but I wonder if we know what we're talking about. Let me give you some examples. I heard the old folks say, I'll go if I have to go by myself. <laughs> we say these things, but when it comes time to go, if you're the only one going, <laughs> will you still go? I think y'all just saying this. I heard the old folks say this, and I began to say it. No cross, no crown. Y'all know y'all don't want no cross. <laughs> but everybody want a crown. You must press to be blessed. I heard the old folks say, the Lord won't put no more on you than you can bear. You know, I told my cousin that once. He was going through some hard times. And I told my cousin, I said, Brother Lord, won't put no more on you than you can bear. And my cousin came back at me and said, Well, I must have one hell of a strong back then, because he sure got a whole lot on me. I said, Well, son, never thought about it that way. But see, it sounds good when you say it. No cross, no crown. I'll go if I have to go by myself. He won't put more on me than I can bear. Sometimes you've just got to press your way. Y'all ever said that? Amen. Sometimes you don't feel like going. Sometimes you don't want to go. When the clock went off at 6.30 this morning, I heard the alarm, but I didn't want to get up. But I knew I had to get ready to spend some time with the master. I had to press, get out of the bed, get ready to spend time with Jesus. Before I came to Rock Hill, there is a blessing in the pressing. Oh, y'all don't hear me. But our story begins here. In the first verse of Mark, the second chapter, it says here in verse number one, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. Oh, I like that first verse. It said Jesus returned to Capernaum and when he got to Capernaum he went by Simon Peter's house 
And the Bible said it was noised that he was in the house. You know, we don't speak like that today. Y'all don't mind if I tell y'all what that means. Somebody told somebody that told somebody and they told somebody that Jesus is in the house. I wish we had about five Holy Ghost filled people that will leave here today and tell your family member that Jesus is at Rock Hill Baptist Church. Go on your job and tell somebody that Jesus is in Rock Hill Baptist Church. They ought to know where Jesus is before Jesus can be at Rock Hill. Jesus got to be in you. You ought to bring Jesus when you come to Rock Hill. When you go home, Jesus should reside at your house. When you're on the job, Jesus ought to go with you on your job. But somebody said, when Jesus got to Capernaum, somebody said, the man that performed miracles is at Peter's house. Somebody said, the great man, the great prophet, he is at Peter's house. Don't y'all know that Jesus is at Peter's house? I wish you would get excited about the fact that Jesus is at Rock Hill Baptist Church. Somebody ought to tell somebody, Jesus, the lily of the valley, Jesus, bright morning star, he is at Rock Hill. He's here because my life changed. He's here because I feel better. He's here because I live better. He's here. I know he's here. They tell me it was noise that Jesus was in the house. Look at verse number two. And straightway many were gathered together. You know, I became just fall in love with some of the words in the Bible that we don't use. I just love that word straightway. I think I'm going to start using that. When I tell my grandkids to do something, I'm going to tell them, do it straightway. I know they're going to look at me strange. But straightway, it means immediately that very hour in an instant they told me that when the folks heard that Jesus was at Simon Peter's house they did not wait but straightway they got in a hurry and they tell me that before long they were gathered together at Simon Peter's house how many of you at Rock Hill got up this morning uh, and straightway uh, made your way uh, to the house of the Lord. Uh, did you get up this morning uh, and straightway uh, you were happy uh, you were going uh, to Rock Hill. Uh, straightway uh, you got down uh, on your knees uh, and gave him thanks uh, for another day. Uh, straightway uh, you called uh, on his name uh, say thank you Lord straightway oh I like that word means to get in a hurry now y'all y'all too slow for for Jesus huh move too slow for the master we uh we go out to preach every now and then and I hear the MC from the pulpit says 
Now the choir from Rock Hill Baptist Church will take the choir off. And I'm sitting in the pulpit and I'm looking out in the audience, folks looking around. You aren't you in the choir? They called you for Jesus. <laughs> Straightway, <laughs> you ought to get up <laughs> and start moving. <laughs> Straightway, <laughs> they have somebody uh, to sing a song. <laughs> I see everybody <laughs> looking around, uh, trying to figure out uh, what to do next. <laughs> Straightway, <laughs> open your mouth, uh, start singing. Uh, I wish they uh, would try the old preacher. I wish I would uh, go to a church uh, and I'm not scheduled uh, to preach the word. Uh, I dare them say uh, we need somebody uh, to preach the word. Straight away, I'll get up, uh, preach the word, uh, tell somebody uh, who Jesus is. Straight away. You ought to be excited about Jesus. Huh? Get in a hurry for Jesus. Oh, let me stop, y'all. They don't want to hear that. Nobody won't say amen, but I know I'm talking right. Look here at verse number two. And so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. Oh, my goodness. This is a beautiful scene. Jesus shows up at Simon Peter's house and upon hearing that Jesus was there they showed up in such large numbers there was no room to receive them I'm still waiting and I'm still waiting for a regular worship service that at Rock Hill Baptist Church there'll be no room to receive the people but I believe the reason why we still got empty pews there's not enough folk telling other folk where Jesus is you didn't tell your co-worker about the good time we had at service you ought to tell somebody at the football game what a good time you had in service but they tell me when they heard that Jesus was in the house the house was filled there was a crowd let me say something about Jesus sorry we ain't got no more preachers here y'all don't mind if I preach to me I need to hear it too now the Bible says when the house got full look at what Jesus did now I, let me see if I can read it to you and he that's Jesus preached the word unto them I wish we had some preachers come on I'm talking to you Pastor Young I wish we had some preachers that'll spend some time before the law and come ready to preach the gospel I don't want to hear no testimony when it's time for preaching I don't want you lining no him when it's time for preaching I don't want you reminiscing of where you've been preach the word preach the word Grab a text uh, and preach the text. Uh, tell me uh, what thus says the Lord. Uh, I want to hear uh, straight from heaven. Uh, preach, preach up. Uh, you ought to preach the word. Uh, tell the folk uh, the wages uh, of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God uh, is eternal life. Uh, tell the folks uh, that God is uh, a rewarder. Uh, of them uh, that diligently uh, seek him uh, tell somebody uh, tell somebody uh, Jesus died uh, on the cross you ought to preach preacher 
you ought to have some scripture. <laughs> the Bible said Jesus preached the word unto them. Oh, you got to press to be blessed. Look at verse 3 says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Oh, hallelujah. I feel good. They tell me, y'all don't mind if I use my spiritual imagination. The fellow that was sick with the palsy, he had no name. But for the sake of the sermon, I'm going to call his brother, Brother John. They tell me, through all of the commotion, Brother John, he was a paraplegic. They tell me he couldn't use his arms, nor his leg. But somebody said, let's go and get Brother John and take him to Jesus. I wonder how many folk would go get somebody and bring them to Jesus. There's a brother John in your apartment complex. There's a brother John on your job. There's a brother John in your house. There's a brother John at Rock Hill. You ought to stop by every now and then. Get brother John and tell brother John we're going uh, to see Jesus. Uh, I know uh, you can't move. Uh, drugs and alcohol uh, got you where you are. Uh, and you can't move. Uh, don't worry. Uh, I'll take you uh, to see Jesus. Uh, I know uh, your finance uh, is burdening you down. Uh, you're not thinking right. Uh, but don't worry. Uh, I'll take you uh, to see Jesus. You ought to stop by and get Brother John. You ought to tell Brother John, I'll make sure you get there. Don't worry about a thing. You just be ready when I get there. I'll take you. If Brother John is in the building this morning and don't have a right for next Sunday, I wish Brother John would call Pastor Young. Say, Pastor Young, I want to come to church, but I don't have any means. See if Pastor Young won't come get you and bring you to see Jesus. I like these four brothers. They realize Brother John can carry himself. But listen, these four brothers knew this. They knew that Jesus was able to help Brother John. Oh, hallelujah. You mean to tell me you know Jesus can change your co-worker's life and you wouldn't offer to bring him or her to Jesus? Huh? You know Jesus can change your spouse. But still, you get up on Sunday and leave him or her in the bed. You know Jesus can help your children, but you press your way to Bible study and you let them stay home and watch TV. Oh, it's a sad situation. But oh, Brother John, he laid there helpless. But I'm so glad that four brothers said to themselves, we can't leave John. Let's go get John. He's sick with the palsy. And look at verse number four. Oh, I like this verse. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press. Oh, hallelujah. Now, you know what? We got to be careful about taking folk in the presence of Jesus. See, a lot of times, the reason why we're not successful, we too busy advertising church. Y'all hear me now? We too busy telling folk how they need to come to Rock Hill Baptist Church. Rock Hill Baptist Church can't do nothing for you. 
we got to get folk in the presence of Jesus. Now listen to me now. They brought Brother John to the house where Jesus was. All right? So the house then would be a representation of the church. So they already had Brother John at church. Brother John was already at church. But they, these brothers knew that wasn't good enough. Jesus can't help him unless we get him in the presence. Oh, hallelujah. They want to get Brother John before Jesus. The next time you're trying to help somebody, stop telling them about how good Jeremy and Deacon Dingle play the instruments even though I know they're good but stop telling them about how good Pastor Young preach that's not important the next time you try to help somebody tell them who Jesus is tell them we serve a God who is able to do all things that's how you help folk but these brothers said here in verse number 4 when they could not come nigh unto Jesus for the press. Oh, glory. I wonder what would have happened if these four brothers that was carrying Brother John, I wonder what would have happened if they were Baptists. Let me tell you how them Baptist folks solve problems. Y'all don't mind. I'm, I'm one of them too. Y'all don't mind if I tell you how them Baptist people solve problems. They came to the house and, and they could not get in. Let me tell you what them old Baptist fellas would have said. Well, fellas, uh, we're going to need to form um, three committees. Them Baptist folk love a committee. They love a committee now. And I can hear them now. Um, we need a door committee, a window committee, and a roof committee. Now I can see them appointing presidents of the committee. Y'all don't mind if I tell y'all the definition. Let me tell y'all what most committees do. Most committees in the Baptist church, they are a group of people who take down minutes and they waste hours. That's most committee. Oh, we'll take down some minutes. Meanwhile, we wasting hours. Tell you about the committee in the Baptist church. Here's the committee. The committee is made up of a group of people who individually can do nothing. But together, they could decide that nothing can be done. Oh, we like that kind of foolishness right there. You put him on the committee. He can't do nothing by himself. But you know what he could do? He can make the committee meeting, and y'all come faithfully to the committee meeting, and we get in the committee meeting, and all we're going to decide is, well, I can't do it, and you can't do it, so together, let's decide that we can't do nothing. We turn off the lights at the church, we lock the door, set the alarm, and we went home, we had a successful committee meeting come back to the church and we're going to tell the church well we met but pastor we can't do nothing oh hallelujah so they tell me I see the chairman of the door committee he thinking about solving this problem they tell me the chairman of the door committee pushed on the door there was an usher Standing at the door, the usher turned around and told the chairman, it's too crowded in here. Y'all can't come in. I see the president of the door committee. He came back and told the brothers, we can't do nothing, boys. The place is full. The president of the window committee said, hold on, brothers. I see the president of the window committee. He goes to a window 
and he raises the window and he peeps his head in and the place was so crowded but he came back and told the committee I'm sorry fellas we can't do nothing oh boy but I believe that the president of the roof committee he was Holy Ghost filled fire baptized washed in the blood of the Lamb he knew Jesus as the pardon of his sin I see the president of the old roof committee he went up on the roof and he came back down and he met with the brothers he said to the brothers he said brothers I got an idea it's a bit far-fetched but let me tell you all you must press to be blessed there is a blessing in the pressing he told the brothers what we gonna do we gonna tear up the roof where Jesus is get brother John on top of the roof and lower him lower him down I see the president right now I see the president of the door committee he's sitting there he looking that's the stupidest yeah y'all ever notice that for who ain't got no idea you ever notice how they always call your idea stupid? You ever notice that? The next time you're in church conference and you got an idea and the person next to you call your stupid, you know how you can shut them up? Look them right now and say, now tell me your idea. Huh? I bet they'll shut up then. I, I, I guarantee you they'll shut up. I see the, uh, I see the president of the window committee he said, now, brother, I've never heard of such foolishness in all my days. You want to tear up the roof to lower his brother in. But I believe that the president of the roof committee, he was determined. He will not give up. He said to the brothers, we've got to press if we want to be blessed. We got John this far. I will not let Jesus go without seeing John. Come on, brothers. I believe that when the president of the roof committee, when he went up top, he left the other three down on the ground. But I see the president with his nice hammer. He began to hammer. I believe he said, one for the father, one for the son, one for the Holy Ghost. I see Jesus as he look up and see the roof begin to fall. I believe Jesus said to himself, look at that. They're pressing. They're pressing. There's a blessing in the pressing. Jesus said, never have, never have. I've seen this kind of faith. Never have. I've seen folk press their way. Will you press? Will you press? There's a blessing in the pressing. Rock Hill in 2016. Will you be willing to press? 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 There's a blessing in the pressing. Don't let don't let folk tell us in 2016 what we can't do huh what we cannot accomplish ain't enough of y'all have to do that you know folks will tell you that man that little church can't do that what y'all thinking you ought to tell them <laughs> we might be small <laughs> in number <laughs> but we got Jesus <laughs> on our side <laughs> with Jesus 
I heard when he said, all things are possible with Jesus. Don't you know man's extremities, oh my goodness, are God's opportunities. Don't let them tell us this year what we can't accomplish. Huh? There's a few of you in here right now know what we got on our plate. You don't believe we can do it. You're a hindrance. Instead of you believing we can't do it, how about you make up in your mind today you won't join in with the press. Huh? You're going to press a little harder. <laughs> going to pray a little harder. Going to live better. <laughs> going to pay more. <laughs> going to love more. <laughs> Choir going to sing more. <laughs> Jeremy and Roy going to play more. <laughs> pastor gonna preach more the deacons gonna serve better the ushers will patrol better the choir need to lift up their voice and let everybody know we're pressing towards the mark there is a blessing in your pressing y'all need to press we ain't gonna let nothing turn us around this year for there's a blessing in the pressing when you see the folk that sit next to you every Sunday, when they start slacking up and not doing their part, tell them you ought to be pressing. You ought to be pushing a little harder when you don't see folk showing up at Bible study. You ought to tell them you ought to press a little harder. When you don't see them at Sunday school you ought to tell them you ought to press a little harder when they don't come to church on the fifth Sunday you ought to tell them you got to press a little harder when you're sitting by them and they get their five dollars to put in the envelope you ought to look them in the eye and say now you know that ain't no tithe you ought to tell them you ought to press a little harder you ought to press because we need you you ought to press because Rock Hill needs you press because the pastor needs you press because your family needs you press we ought to be willing to press if it means we can't get in through any other means than tearing up the roof why are you going to turn around and go home? Huh? See, that's what we do. Oh, that looks too hard. We turn around and go home. Oh, we say, oh, we can't do that. We quit. Why are you quitting? And you're on the winning team. Jesus is on your side. Please stand to your feet. Let us open the doors of the church. There's a blessing in your pressing. You must press to be blessed. As the choir sing, we're going to open the doors of the church. We take you by letter. Christian experience. Candidate for baptism. There is a blessing.